Um, so tonight was a, a tough night, obviously, for, uh, for bonuses. Uh, we felt like the fight of the night was the Rebecca fight. Um, Shara, Hamzat, and Toporia, we actually kicked in another. You can't not give those three guys bonuses. And then um, we'll take care of Ebo too. He's not getting 50, but he won't be disappointed. <clears throat> Maybe he will. I don't know. <laughs> Who's got the first question? Dana, this feels like one of those events that you sort of sit at home thinking about for the next week and just going over all the amazing fights we had tonight. Starting with the main event, you know, there's a lot of questions about Eli Taporia. Is he as good as he says he is and all that sort of stuff? No one's done that to Max Holloway. Give us your thoughts on his performance and the result. I agree. Uh, we, we were just talking in the back, you know, as you start to clip off legend after legend after legend, you eventually become a legend. So he, uh, he looked, both guys look great tonight. Max came in with the right game plan. I think that that, the early calf kicks, you know, added up and took their toll later on in the fight. Those things are so devastating when people throw them the right way. And uh, yeah, he couldn't have fought a better fight. Took some big shots himself, has the chin, kept coming forward. Incredible performance by both guys, but Toporia did, 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 did something that nobody's ever done before. And if you think of the names that Max has fought, right, Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, these guys have landed big shots on him before, but for Ilya Toporia, who's not even a particularly big featherweight, how crazy is it that he can generate that much power in his shots? Yeah, he's legit. If you question a guy after Volk, I mean, you can't question him after tonight. He is, uh, he is legit. Obviously, Volk did come in the cage. I know we should probably wait until Tuesday, but does that seem like the logical fight to give up since uh, Deporia said he wants to do the rematch as well? Listen, Volkanovski is one of those guys. We're not going to say no to Volkanovski. He's, he's, he's been that guy for us anytime we needed him. You know, he was on this run like Adesanya and like Alex is on right now when things don't go our way and you got to call a guy. Volkanovski's always been that guy. He, he, he really was. And, uh, you know, for him to ask for... It's n nobody. I don't think anybody's in this room going, oh, this is ridiculous or crazy. And who wouldn't want to see it again? Yeah. So, Ilya Tapuri has just knocked out Volkanovski, knocked out Max Holloway, two of the, the best ever in that division or even in the sport. Yep. How does his year rank up to Alex Pereira, who's had so much activity and crazy knockouts himself? And, and Islam, you know. I mean, when you look at these guys and, and, and these runs they're on, it's incredible. Hamzat Chemaev obviously did what he does. Um, I think people were a little bit confused at how quick Rob tapped until they saw the image has just come out of his jaw. Insane. And you're right. So as soon as that happened, I picked up the phone and I called the truck and they're like, yeah, his, his jaw popped. And uh, that's what that's. So I knew what had happened because I didn't know what happened either. Why he tapped so quick. Because Mick came over and we were like, he didn't even have the choke in. It's weird. Yeah, he popped his jaw. And so, so it was, you know, when you do that. Like it splits and the teeth get all messed up. Rob has that right now. So is that a dislocation or a break or what exactly? Mm -hmm. I don't know yet. It's not good. <laughs> when your teeth are going, you know, it's not good. And then after the fight, obviously you ran up and spoke to Hamza Chimaev on his way out of the ring. Just curious what you got to say to him and, and what exactly his future could be. Yeah, I just said congratulations. Uh, great fight. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Dana, we're here. Was there any update on RDA? Because uh, obviously it looked like he blew his knee out in there. I think that's what happened, yeah. I, I don't know exactly, but we're pretty sure he blew his knee out. Same as uh, Oral B, uh, that, they got, after that war. Um, obviously his eye was swollen shut and he somehow How? kept fighting. So, so when you guys were watching that fight, what did you immediately think? Huh? Doctor stoppage. Orbital, right? No. It's fucking crazy. Soft tissue swelling. That was it. That's, that's insane. It's incredible. I thought his orbital was destroyed. No. Nope. Pretty amazing. Uh, Magomed all week has said uh, that you told him that he needed an impressive performance to get the next title shot. Uh, Ankalaev, I'm curious what you thought of his victory. He looked good. He absolutely looked great. And uh, Shar Bullet, um, obviously one of the knockouts of the year, probably would be on the short list if it wasn't for Max at 300 with a double spinning back fist. He also wants to seem to fight every week. Like he wants to turn around and fight in Macau, and then he wants to turn around and fight in Saudi Arabia. He's calling out Israel Adesanya. Is he just like a promoter's dream, like this exciting fighter that just seems to want to fight every single weekend? Yes, I love guys like that. And that's how you do it. Listen, if you're that good 
and you're that confident in yourself and uh, you get out of a fight and you don't feel all banged up and you're ready to turn around, it's what everybody should do. And what was the, uh, there was a bit of a drama with Fareed Basharat and his opponent where he, had, Basharat was in here, said he had made weight, bantamweight, and then his opponent couldn't make it, so then he agreed to fight him at featherweight. So he weighed in at 137, and his opponent weighed in at like 146. Um, it was that 10 pound difference at the weigh ins. Like he said, he can't remember a time this has ever happened. He makes weight, still has to fight at featherweight. What, when did you learn that all that was going down? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Dana, uh, to, go, right here, to go back to Ankalaev, uh, he promised coming into this fight he wouldn't shoot a single takedown. He didn't do it. Um, is this enough to get Alex Pereira his title fight? It's the second longest unbeaten streak in the history of this division behind John Jones. I would have to say yes. Yeah. And uh, go back to what Oscar said there about, you know, uh, Alex Pereira versus Ilya Tapuria. Who, who would you give your Fighter of the Year award? Alex had the quickest fighter to ever get three title defenses 175 days, Ilya knocking out both these guys, who would you give it to? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. That's a tough one. I'd have to, um, I'd have to look at more, more numbers and stats, but, you know, you, you can't take it away from either one of them what they've done this year. Um, I mean, Alex, when you look at Alex, he's on vacation in Australia, and we call him and packs up and heads home and comes into the fight. I mean, he's just he's built different, that guy. Yeah, I don't know if we'll ever see what he just did again for a very long time. It, it's like he doesn't even care about a full camp. He doesn't care if he's hurt. He doesn't, he doesn't care about anything. He'll get in there and fight. Conor McGregor tweeted, call me after the main event. Uh, Lene just told me that, yeah. <laughs> what do you think he's referring to, Max at 155 for the BMF maybe? Or him and Ilya have had a lot of stuff to say to each other in recent months? I don't know. I think that uh, he did it to get this. We're all sitting here going, huh, what did he mean? Yeah, and I asked you the other night about, uh, at PowerSlap about uh, Marab and Umar, and after that, uh, Marab at the Q&A before weigh-ins got asked about Umar, and he got like really upset when someone said he's ducking Umar. Um, is that the plan to do that fight? Like, Is that the next fight you want at Bantamweight, Marab versus Umar? Absolutely. Okay. And another thing you mentioned at Power Slap the other night was stuff about Francis and Ganu, and uh, that stirred up a lot of reaction from the MMA community and from Francis and himself. And he had a, a very interesting quote. Can I redo a little sure. bit? He said, uh, he can't handle this loss, referring to you. I'm sure he's been praying for my downfall. Uh, which money is he talking about? The money that he owes me? They say we're going to give you back pay uh, from the money we owe you from the Stipe and Surreal Gone fights. All that, they never paid me back. Now I've made more money than I would have ever made in the UFC, I would say twice the money in my entire UFC career. Yeah, when have you ever heard a story in all the years we've been in business, even when it was upside down, where we owed somebody money? Never happened. Um, so he's full of shit there. Um, then I, I'm, I, I lost. I didn't lose anything. I was done with Francis after the... Uh, he actually, actually, he owes me money. Because we had to watch that fight with him and the Black Beast. He should actually pay me back for that fight. Um, and all of you. Uh, and me praying for it. Trust me. I, I don't think about Francis that much. You guys asked me the question about the PFL. And I responded. Other than that, the only one who's praying for his demise is probably the PFL. Because they signed a shitty contract with a guy that doesn't deliver any numbers. And ticket sales are pay-per-views, so. And they got to keep paying this guy for however long. And good for him. And Not I, good for them. Yeah, and I know what was the other question? Uh, it was, I know you said, like, he's, he's all about the money, but then you also said, like, he would have made more money to stay here. So and that's a fact. Uh, he, can, he, he, can, he can play those games all he wants. He, he would have made more money here. And just lastly. Let me tell you what. There were two guys here. I wanted to cut them. Someday I'll tell you the story. Francis was like, I, I was all about Francis in the beginning. And then I found out who Francis was. And I told the two guys who asked me not to cut Francis, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. And, uh, yeah, believe me, I have no sleepless nights over Francis leaving. So just two more things on this. Um, yep. You wanted to cut him, but he went on to become the UFC heavyweight champion. So I guess what does that say about that thought process? Are you? Yeah. Does it show he should have stayed? Well, or? no. I didn't like Francis as a person. 
wasn't a guy I wanted to do business with. My boys were telling me he's misunderstood. And I told them, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Yeah, it wasn't about him becoming the heavyweight champion of the world. Francis isn't a good guy. He plays the good guy. Duh, duh, I don't understand the language. And, you know, so he seems like he's a nice guy. He's not. And he's just not a guy that I wanted to be in business with. Period. End of story. Whether he became the champion or not. And I assume you don't want to be in business with him ever again, but... We won't be. Um, we'll never be in business together. You, I mean, you can tell. Yeah. We don't like each other. Yeah. And this goes way back. This goes back to before the first Stipe fight. He pulled some shit before the first Stipe fight, and I said, I'm done with this guy, and then Stipe beat the shit out of him. Great night. And then, uh, yeah, we, we never had a relationship after that. Well, I know you said uh, John Jones would walk out of any room, so wouldn't it be gratifying to put him in a room with Francis? He didn't want that, that fight. He could have stayed and took that fight. He didn't want that fight. Tom Aspinall deserves that fight. And just one other uh, unrelated thing. Uh, Ian Gary posted a couple weeks ago him signing a contract for Colby Covington. He said it was going to be the main event in Tampa. I know you said in the past Colby's never turned down fights. Uh, did he turn down that one? And what's going on with that potential match? I don't know yet. We, we're, we're, we're still making it. It's, it's not that anybody's turning down fights. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, nobody's turning down fights. Uh, Donna. Hey, you. Oh, sorry. Hey, Dana. Um, after see, uh, two weeks ago, you said Sean Strickland will be next for Drikas Duplessis, but after seeing Hamzat's performance tonight, uh, is Strickland still next, or is, is it going to depend? It's a good question. Call me on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and just uh, one other one for me. Uh, I heard that there are plans of you know the UFC going to Abu Dhabi more uh, in 2025. Are we just looking at Riyadh and Abu Dhabi when it comes to the Middle East, or could we be looking at other countries in the Middle East? At Definitely. I mean, um, we're uh, yeah, we, we you know how it is. We want to take this thing everywhere. So yes, we could be looking at other countries. We're in talks right now, and um, and yeah, we want to bring more fights here too. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Да, на поздравляю с очередным крутым турниром. Ты уже доказал, что ММА может конкурировать с боксом, но сейчас параллельно шел футбол Барселона против Реала. Когда ММА сможет конкурировать с футболом? Congratulations on another great event. You already sure. proven that you can compete with boxing, but tonight at the same time that we had the event, there was the big soccer match. When are we going to be able to compete with the giant soccer? Well, the, I, I don't really. Uh, feel like I compete with other combat sports. I compete with things like soccer and the NFL and college football and the NBA. I mean, that, that's what we can, movies. I mean, whatever takes the attention of people on Saturdays is what I compete with. Я не думаю, что я соревнуюсь с боксом или с какими-то другими видами спорта, боевого спорта. Мне кажется, что я уже соревнуюсь и с большим футболом, и с американским футболом, и с НБА и так далее. Вот это так, и даже, даже с кино. Поэтому вот такие вот самые большие вещи, это вот с ними я соревнуюсь. В четвертый раз за историю UFC бой за титул дали дебютанту Кайо Асакари. Правильно я понимаю, что это говорит о кризисе в наилегчайшем весе? This is the fourth time in the history of the UFC that a debut guy, guy that's debuting, is getting a title shot. Uh, is that, is, what, what did you say? Кайо Асакари. This is the fourth time in the history of the UFC that a debut guy is getting a title shot. Uh, Кайо Асакари. Does that mean that there is a trouble in that division? No, it means he's a bad motherfucker. Нет, он просто охуенный. Когда, когда объявят реванш с Сарукьяном и Махачева? When is going to be announced the rematch between Сарукьян and Махачев? I don't know. Не знаю. Call me on Tuesday. Во вторник позвони. И последний от меня вопрос. Совсем недавно Шейн, на подкасте рассказали о том, что у Шейна Карвина началась деменция. Поможет ли как-то UFC ветерану этого спорта и человеку, который заслуживает быть в зале славы? There was a podcast that said that Shane Carmen had, uh, had dementia started. Uh, will the UFC help him out somehow for this person who deserves to be in the Hall of Fame? What's the question? Would we do what? Would you help him out somehow? We have been helping him out. We have been working with Shane Carmen for a long time. Мы уже давно ему помогаем, уже давно с ним работаем. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead, ma'am, in the back there. Yeah. Me? 
Yeah. Hi, uh, Hi, Dana. Uh, Christina from Europop. Again, congratulations on a wonderful ni night of fights. That Thank was you. amazing. Uh, so now you have two champions from Georgia, uh, and one of them today just made history for our country and for UFC as well, made his first title defense. Uh, as a person who represents Georgian sports media, I get bombarded with questions that now that we have two champions, right. will the UFC will bring an event if not in Georgia, then maybe in the region. So are there any plans? I know you've mentioned either Madrid or Barcelona, but are there any plans to bring UFC and just, in general, have more cards in Europe? Well, the answer to that is yes. This business is star-driven. You know, so when we have a South African, we want to get to Africa. When we have, you know, uh, somebody from Spain, we want to get into Spain. Georgia, yes. The answer is yes. Um, I, I don't, you know, we haven't looked into that yet or what it would take to pull off an event near there or, or whatever. I mean, we're still trying to figure out Spain uh, with the arena situation. But when you look at the performance that uh, that Toporia had tonight, we need to get to Spain and figure it out quickly. Well, we're waiting for you for sure. Thank you. Um, uh, another thing uh, for Max today, I mean, I think we can both agree that Max is the legend of the game, right? And uh, do you, uh, first, one question of that is why wasn't the BMF title on the line for this fight? And the, uh, the second part of the question is are you now more sure of doing the maybe tournament for that belt in up, up in the lightweight division? So um, the the... the, the Toporia's belt was on the line. Max was trying to take that. I want to say it was like, uh, I don't know, halfway through the second round. I said, shit, we should have put the bad motherfucker title up for the, on this fight too, because these guys are both it. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what we'll do with it yet. But, but Max still has it. Max holds the title, so we'll see what happens. Okay, uh, another one. Uh, Ilya mentioned wanting to get eventually during his career three belts. He defended one today. How realistic do you think that is, given what he has shown us and given the fact that he's only 28 years old? Yeah, I, I like uh, when guys absolutely wipe out a division and then you're like, what's next? He's already beat this guy. You know, if, if the Volkanovsky fight happens, beat him twice, beat Max, he beat this guy, that guy, then you start looking at what's next. Mm -hmm. And just one last one from me. Uh, a couple of days ago, I saw a video of you mentioning that you were very impressed with the new influx of talent, especially female talent in, uh, in the UFC, and you felt like you may be, it's time to create new divisions like Adam Waite. Uh, that is something that I've been uh, very interested in, and I was wondering if there was like any timeline, how serious those plans are, and you know, if, if they are serious, when can we expect that to happen? It's a great question, and every time I say something, I'm very serious about it. You know, we were talking about the rankings, we've been working on the rankings. We talked about that, we've been working on that. Mick feels like th th that that division isn't strong enough to actually build right now, but it's something that we're looking at, working on, and, and figuring out the possibilities, I guess I would say. Okay, thank you so very much. Thank Dana. you. Dana, yep. here. here. Hi. After, hi, hello. After this incredible victory of Ilya Topuri against Max Holloway, can you confirm that Topuria's next fight will be in Spain? Yeah, I was just saying, we have to get it done. We have to figure this out. I hate going to soccer stadiums. I like arenas better, but if that's what we got to do, then that's what we got to do. But yes, we need to get to Spain. And after knocking out uh, Holloway and Volkanovski, where does Topurias stand in the UFC featherweight historical ranking? Well, like I was saying earlier, when you, when you, when you keep clipping legends, legend after legend after legend, you become a legend. So he's, he's, on, he's on the right path. Have you said, Dina, that Bernabeu is an option now, even uh, you hate it? Did you say that the stadium was announced, even though you hate going to stadiums? Are you announcing that we're going to the stadium? No. So no. you hate it and Bernabeu no. is not an option? You guys are the best. The best. No, I did not say. I said if we have to, we will. I would prefer not to, but we haven't done anything yet. We're, as far as we, where we stand right now is all the arenas were booked up. We're trying to figure it out, but if I have to go to a stadium, I will. Dana right here. Thank you. Um, 
Hi. First of all, I owe you an apology. I was one of the people that hated Power Slap. I did a commentary in Arabic for them last time, and my God, you're 100% right. We are all wrong. I respect you so much for seriously that Power Slap. Thank you, amazing. sir. It's like an no, MMA, it's, I mean, it's a different experience live. Especially, it's, it's yeah. totally different. Thank uh, you. Now, for the next year, here for Abu Dhabi and Saudi, I know there, like the, His Excellency Turk Al Sheikh asked you to add more Power Slap in Saudi. You, he, you said one, he said two. What do we expect? How many of them? How many? Yeah, we're, we're, Power Slap's going everywhere. We had, yeah. we had people uh, at that event from, uh, from all over the place. And, and yeah, we're, we're, we're going everywhere with Power Slap. And as far as uh, Africa, are we going North Africa or South Africa? Because south. We're, we're going to go South first. Looking at other places in the Middle East right now, we're looking to add more in uh, Saudi and, and and more here in Abu Dhabi. Because there's uh, talk and then we're going to Florida, Texas. I want to go to Hawaii with Power Slap. Um, the list goes on and on. Amazing. But one last question for me: the power ranking is it fixed? Because I know you hate the media being involved. And I did you are you guys fixing the, the pound for pound ranking? Oh, we're trying to yeah. I'm trying to fix the rankings. Yeah, we, we've, been, we've been working on it. Um, I think we have a really good plan in place. I can't really talk about it right now, but when I do, I'll, I'll let you know. We've got a good plan. Just got to get it done now. Hi, Dana. Hi. Uh, congratulations for a successful event uh, today. What lacks it from our uh, perspective is uh, uh, the number of Arab fighters. We wish to see more Arab fighters uh, fighting. And we would humbly request from you to have uh, Dana White looking for a fight here in Abu Dhabi or maybe in Saudi Arabia. You will see uh, many uh, fighters who are at uh, top level that we want to, to test them in the UFC. Like uh, Abdul Rahman Hiyasat, he's undefeated from Jordan. Abi Sagir, he's based in Michigan, undefeated 6-0 lightweight. We have uh, Muhammad al Agra, who is uh, Kuwaiti and uh, training uh, in, with Khafir Mendez in AKA, undefeated 7-0. So if you can do such thing, we will be blessed with UFC here in the region. Thank you, sir. Um, yes, I could, I could see us doing one. We're, we're talking about doing a lot of things here in the region right now. I had meetings since I've been here um, about doing more. I am So the, you know the kid that came up on stage the other day. So the Korean zombie started a, his own MMA organization, and he's got a fight like December 14th or 16th. And I'm doing looking for a fight there. We're going to take that kid. We're going to put him on that show. We'll match make it. We'll pay for the fight. And, uh, and we'll see if he makes it. My second question. Uh, uh, about uh, Ilya Tuporia, uh, in the media, they said that in the press conference, you did him bad by drinking water and putting the same cup in front of him. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> and he was thirsty and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I need to be more aware of. Uh, I was thirsty too, but I should have waited till after the press conference. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my final question: uh, Before yesterday, I saw Mohamed Mukayev, who was competing in ADXC. Uh, some people said that uh, Raul Rosas uh, UFC rejected him to fight uh, Mukayev because they were afraid that he will lose from Mukayev. Was it, uh, that who would? Rosas was supposed Rosas to fight him. Yeah, he was supposed Mukayev. to fight him for the main who, event. Who said that? We heard in media that uh, from who? Uh, UFC rejected him to fight Mukayev and Eddie. Who'd you hear that from? So it's, uh, <laughs> who? Random people on Twitter. So UFC didn't reject that he fight in ADXC? No, the, the, he, 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 So first of all, he wasn't released. He just wasn't resigned. His contract expired, and th there were a lot of issues with him behind the scenes, um, and some not behind the scenes that. The matchmakers were done with him. Yeah. They, were, they were tired of him, and they didn't want to deal with him anymore, so they didn't re-sign him. Uh, last question about uh, Mukayev. Uh, I did an interview with him, and uh, uh, he said that he matured now, and he has a good relation with you. But some people maybe are saying uh, like negative things about him to you, and uh, he wish one day that he can be re-signed with you. UFC. Do you think it may happen? He said that you guys now have a good relationship and it's just some other people that are saying that bad things about him to you, but he hopes that the relationship could be mended and one day he could be back in the UFC. Yeah, listen, I have no problem with him. I've never had a beef with him, but <clears throat> I don't deal with him on a daily basis. If I did, maybe I would. Um, you know, the matchmakers didn't, didn't want to re-sign him. Huh? Oh, he lost? Split decision. 
Listen, I, I got no problem with the kid. PFL should sign him. <laughs> Thank you. Dana, Thank you. Just over here. Um, yesterday at the fan Q&A, um, Marab said that he wants to rematch Sean O'Malley um, towards the end of this year or early next year. And then you've also got Marab on Twitter saying that um, Marab is ducking him. Um, could you provide some clarity on that situation? Umar said that Marab is docking him, but Marab said that he wants to rematch O'Malley either at the end of this year or the beginning of next year. What's the situation? Umar. That's what I think. Umar, because he, there was some news that came out that he's scheduled to fight so, um, Son Yong, Son Yong Dong. Um, is that, is there any confirmation to that? Did we announce it? No. Then no. Just one more as well. With the BMF title, um, assuming Max goes up for his next fight to lightweight, who comes to mind for a match with him? I don't even know. Right here, right now, I have no idea. Um, like I say, we uh, we got to fly to New York tonight and then back to Vegas Monday morning. Tuesday we'll be in the uh, back in the office and we'll start looking at what's next for all these guys. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Dan Hooker. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Dana, over here. Yeah. Hello. Uh, as a fellow Georgian of Ilya Tafuria, uh, there's many, many two champions of the UFC, Mirab and Ilya, and also many Georgian fighters in the UFC in Oweda. Uh the, the Georgian fans want to know what's your opinion about the Georgian fighters in Oweda, and also the small countries like Georgia and many other countries having fighters in UFC. What's, what's in the water of those countries and what makes the, those fighters different, in your opinion? There's two champs from Georgia in the UFC. There's other Georgian fighters in the UFC. What is your opinion about Georgian fighters? And, and also, since there's, there's so many good fighters from that region, what do you think is in the water that makes them so good? Yeah, I, I, you know, obviously, when you, when you talk about Georgia now, I mean, to have two guys that are world champions from, from there is incredible. Um, and anything that ends in Stan, uh, some tough guys are coming from... Uh, you know, there's just these parts of the world where, where these guys are built different, and uh, obviously, you know, sambo and wrestling and is, is a big part of their culture, and um, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I always talk about Australia. How many? In 2001, we had Elvis Sinisic. Uh That was the only guy in Australia, and if you look at how far they've come uh, in such a short amount of time in that region, and and, and the same could be said for for Georgia. To have two world champions in the UFC, it's almost impossible to become top five, top three in the UFC. But to have two world champions from there, it's incredible. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Dano. Dano. Yes. В первую очередь, поздравляю с таким шикарным турниром. Вопрос такой. Сегодня Шара Буллет сотворил историю, оформив первую в истории нокаут двойным бэквистом. Вот э, включил бы ты этот нокаут э, спис, э, в топ-3 своих любимых, э, любимых и э, непредсказуемых нокаутов. First of all, congratulations on an incredible event. Second of all, tonight Shara Bullet made history by putting in the books the first ever double, double back fist knockout. Would yeah. you include that knockout in the top three of all time, most unexpected, amazing knockouts? 100%. Um, that's why I was saying when we, when we did the the performance of the night. You could not give the two kids that won uh, fight of the night the fight of the night, and you could not give all three guys the bonus that uh, that won. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. По любому без вопросов я никогда такого не видел и невозможно было не дать бонус двум пацанам, которые сделали лучший бой вечера, но невозможно было не дать бонус всем остальным троим, поэтому одна из самых крутых вещей, которых когда видел по любому. А готов ли Шара сейчас драться против бойца из топ-10 или топ-5, может? Do you think Шара is ready for a top-10 or a top-5 fighter? I don't know. I think that, uh, again, when we get back into the office next week and, and uh, we'll start putting all this stuff together, I, I mean, he looked incredible tonight. He looked good. And he, and he beat a real guy, like a tough guy, and did it in spectacular fashion. So the answer is probably yes. Не знаю, надо будет приехать, вернуться домой, посмотреть, рассмотрим. Но сегодня он выглядел невероятным образом. Сегодня победил настоящего бойца, сильного бойца. То есть, скорее всего, да. И вот хотел бы ты, чтобы он дрался в Штатах, потому что Шара нам рассказывал, что в некоторых Штатах он может уступать. 
would you like Shara to fight in the States? Because he said that some of the States would allow him to fight. Yeah, listen, I'd, I'd like to travel that guy all over the place, you know. Um, we'll see. Да, конечно, я бы хотел бы, чтобы он путешествовал везде. Да, посмотрим. Да, и последний вопрос, если можно. Чья ММА борьба сильнее, на твой взгляд, Чимаева, который показал яркое выступление, Махачева или Хабиба? And just a final question, who do you think has the best MMA wrestling? Chimaev, Mahachev, or Habib? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, that's a tough one. I mean, if you look at what Habib, um, you know, achieved in the sport, and it's hard not to say Hamzat either. I mean, that guy came out tonight and, yeah, he looked damn good. Очень сложный вопрос, потому что нельзя не заметить то, что, то чего добился Хабиб своей борьбой вообще в UFC. И, ну и то, что сделал сегодня Чимаев, тоже неповторимо, поэтому стра... сложный вопрос. Hey, Dana. Thank you. Here yeah. to your right. Yep. You probably already hate us Spaniards with all this when are you coming to Spain questions, but whether it is an arena or a soccer stadium, what would you need to see from either Barcelona or Madrid to decide on one of the two? You probably already hate all these questions from the Spanish reporters about whether you come into a soccer stadium or to the arena, but what do you need to see from either Barcelona or Madrid in order for you to make that decision? Availability. <laughs> Availability, number one. And I don't hate the questions. I love the questions. I mean, obviously, uh, I want to go to Spain as bad as Spain wants us to come, so we're working on it. We'll, we'll get it done. There, there's never been... Uh, a, a time where we said we're going to do something and we don't do it. We, we, we figure it out and we'll get it done. And it's important for me to go to Spain in, in 25, so we'll figure it out. And would you need a specific number of Spanish fighters to go to, to, to our country, or would that be okay with the four we have already? Do you need a specific number of Spanish fighters in order no. to go to that country? No, I mean, once you get into a market for the first time, you know, obviously there'll be Spanish fighters on the card, but no, it's, it's, it, it's not... We need to bore you. <laughs> yeah. Then there were there were six undefeated fighters this evening before this evening. So Ibo was the only one who took somebody's O. I'm right here on your right and far behind. So what do you make of his performance? Did he, did he make met, did he meet your expectations? There were six undefeated fighters and Ibo was the only one who took somebody's O. What would you make of his performance? Yeah. Well, like I said, the the other performances, uh, you know. We're at such a higher level, but he, he should have got a bonus tonight, too. But we're going to take care of him. We'll, we'll take care of him. Like I said, when I walked in, it's not going to be 50, but we'll take care of him. He, he looked spectacular. You know, we moved that to the main event, like, two days before we left the office. And uh, we were all in there talking and felt like, uh, you know, that should be the, 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 the main event of the prelims. And how about Ivo and all the other teams? And he delivered. And how about you and all the other talent around this region? And Istanbul is an option for UFC Istanbul. What do you think about that? Um, I don't know. Off the top, I would like to think that everywhere in the world is an option for us. Um, but, you know, like I said, a lot of these things are, are star-driven. When you have a guy who uh, comes from, you know, we go into a market and you have a, you have a guy who can potentially be a star or is already a rising star and you, and, and you bring him into these, into these markets, like... We have two Georgian world champions, right? You had Conor McGregor who ignited all of Europe and other parts of the world. Um, you got Toporia now, where you're talking about going to, um, to Spain. You talk about uh, Duplessis in Africa and, you know, Izzy and Rob and, uh, you know, over in Australia and New Zealand. It's star-driven. We, we pop up with somebody from Istanbul. I'll see you there, believe me. Dana, uh, last for, for me, only one. Uh, I don't know if Ila Chupuria is like a, a visionary because uh, he promised, uh, every he promised are done. Uh, and last week he promised to be champion in three divisions. Are you worried about that? Um, Ilya Tapuria is like a visionary. Everything he says, everything he promises comes true. He promised something this last week, it came true today. Now he promised he's going to be a champion in three divisions. Are you worried about that? Why would I worry about that? That's awesome. I mean, I'm a big fan of manifesting. I mean, all the greats do it. When you look at 
all the greats that have ever, uh, you know, competed in, in, in combat sports, they all tell you what they're going to do. And uh, they usually do it. I love it. Hi. First of all, congratulations on the great show. Thank you. If Ilya's next fight will be in Spain in 2025, is it possible to see two Georgian champions on the same card? Uh, yeah, anything's possible. Anything is possible. Will you bring us Omali in Spain, or it will be Mera versus Umar? Umar is next. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Dana. Hey, Dana. To your left. Yep. Um, I don't have a question, but I just really want to appreciate what you, did, what you did to the sport. And I want you to know that even after 100 or 150 years, your name will always be there. So my request is never stop what you're doing. Keep making this as big as you can and never retire. Always stay there. You are not allowed to retire. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Dana. Go Over ahead, right. brother. Right. Yep. From Leader Sport. First of all, congratulations again on the amazing card. Thank you. Uh, featherweight is full of killers. You have Ilya, you have Volkanovski, Holloway, Diego Lopez, Evloev. Uh, would you say it's the toughest division right now to compete in? Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of them. It's one of them. I think there's a few tough divisions right now. Another question. Ilya's brother, Alexander Tupuria, is also signed with the UFC. Any news maybe about his future opponent? No clue. No, not right here off the top of my head, no. Thank you. Thank you. You guys done with me? Have a great night. Thanks a lot.